I'm not ashamed. Did God actually intend to destroy Israel and make a great nation of Moses? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Exodus on walking through the Bible. The glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Exodus 32. We're going to be reading from verses 7 to 14. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Exodus 32, beginning at verse 7. And the Lord said to Moses, Go, get down, for your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And I will make of you a great nation. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians speak and say, He brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains? and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath and relent from this harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord relented from the harm which he said he would do to his people. In our last episode, we had Israel impatient as to what had happened to Moses, commanding Aaron to build them an idol to worship as God. Aaron made a golden calf, and it was proclaimed that this was the God that brought them up out of Egypt, a ludicrous statement. Seeing the people's excitement, Aaron proclaimed a feast day to Jehovah where sacrifices would be made before the calf. This statement does show us that Aaron did not believe that another God other than Jehovah brought them up out of Egypt, but even with this knowledge, Aaron should have known that what he had made was sinful, for God had told them in Exodus 20, verse 4, that even he wasn't to be worshipped with an image. Coming now to verse 7, the Lord informs Moses as to what is going on in the camp and tells him to go down. The Lord is able to converse with Moses and yet at the same time know what is going on in the camp should show us the awesome power and omniscience of the true God of this universe. God told Moses that they had molded for themselves a calf and worshipped it, sacrificed to it, and said that this is the God that brought them out of the land of Egypt. I'd like us to note the language God uses. He said that Israel was worshipping the calf, even though Aaron had said in verse 5 that they would be worshipping the Lord. The reason I point this out is because some people who claim to be Christians today have all sorts of items they claim that they are not worshipping, but merely using in the worship of God. Some of these items include, but are not limited to, crosses, rosary beads, statues, paintings, and the like. If God wanted us to use these items in worship, he would have told us, but he didn't because he doesn't want to be worshipped in this way. In truth, these things are idols, and even though we may claim that they aren't, if we're worshipping with these, we're worshipping idols, even though we might be claimed to be worshipping God. What we have recorded for us in verses 9 to 14 is another one of those passages that confuses a lot of people and actually exposes some of the doctrines of Calvinism for what they are, false doctrine. God said that he knew that the children of Israel were a stubborn people, something that was quite clear by how many times Israel murmured against God since leaving Egypt. Because of this, God said that he was going to destroy this people and make of Moses a great nation. Now, it should be stated before we continue that if God did destroy Israel here, he would not have broken the covenant made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for Moses was of the seed of these patriarchs, being a son of Levi. The question often asked is, did God really intend to destroy Israel here, or was this simply a test of Moses' faith, or a chance for Moses to serve as a mediator between God and Israel, much like Jesus serves as the mediator between God and man? To answer that question, I ask you to look at the passage. Does the passage say that Moses' faith was being tested here? No, it doesn't. In Genesis 22, verse 1, the story where God told Abraham to offer his son Isaac on the altar, that passage said that God was testing Abraham's faith. So if this was a test of Moses' faith, God would have said that in some way in the text. Next, does the passage say that God was using this opportunity for Moses to act as a mediator? Again, no, it doesn't. 
Now, yes, Moses was acting as a mediator, but God didn't create this scenario just so Moses could do so. God actually sent Jesus to die on the cross so that he could act as our mediator. So if God wanted to create a situation so Moses could foreshadow Christ, he could have. With those two options out of the way and no third option available, it is therefore necessary to conclude that God did intend to destroy Israel here. So if God did intend to destroy Israel, what stopped him? The plea of Moses. In pleading with God, Moses didn't tell God anything he didn't already know. Moses said that if Israel was destroyed, then Egypt would mock him. While that might certainly be true, I don't believe God is too concerned with what mankind may think, for what he would have done would have been righteously justified. Moses asked God to remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and not destroy Israel for the sake of the covenant made with them. God heard the plea of Moses and relented, showing us that the future is not set in stone and the Calvinistic doctrine of unconditional election, which teaches that God chose before creation who would be saved and lost, is false, for God can choose to relent of what he desires to do if he so wills. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Exodus chapter 32, verses 15 to 18, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.